the undisputed king for over 20 years, the number one ball in golf, reigning at the top of the mountain for over 20 years. However, all reigns must come to an end eventually. Will Titleist ever be dethroned? All right, let's get this over with. All right, guys, so first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, welcome to the channel, Golf Ball Addict. Um, this, of course, is the Titleist Pro V1 review. Um, it's funny, you know, I compare every single golf ball to the Pro V1, most guys do. Um, it's been the standard for so many years, but I've never actually reviewed one. So a while back, I was at a, uh, a PGA Tour event. It was the Valspar Championship, and uh, they actually had a Titleist booth there where they gave me some Pro V1s, you know, fresh out the box, you know, straight from the factory. And I thought, you know what, that'd be the perfect opportunity to test one. Uh, so I took them home, did some testing, and we're here to see how the results is. Now, if you watch my channel at all, or you've seen some of my past videos, you might know that I've actually been pretty heavily critical of the Pro V1, um, as you should be. I mean, you, you should always question, you know, the number one ball and, and keep it on its toes to keep getting better because a lot of these other companies are making strides and, and coming up with ways to match the Pro V1 because and, and, it's their direct competition. So that's what they're doing. So I have been heavily critical for many reasons. Uh, one of them, I think, is that they just haven't changed the design in so many years. I also think that um, I think it's a little overhyped. Um, and it's not overhyped because it's a bad ball. It's overhyped because the people who use them and love them might love them a little too much because uh, some of the responses I get are just crazy as far as how loyal these, these guys really are. So um, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I have a average swing. So my, my swing is about 100 mile an hour. I usually get about 140 mile an hour ball speed. Um, so that's about average. It's not fast. You know, I'm I'm 28 years old. I have a decently fast swing. It's not going to be faster than some guys. I know some guys are hitting, you know, 270, 280. That's more tour level. I hit about 250 after the carry, maybe 255. So um, that's what I am testing this ball as. Um, so keeping in mind that if you're already coming into this saying, hey, you know, it's designed for pro players. What are you doing? I just want to get it out of the way right now that I understand that, but let's be honest, not just pro players are using this golf ball. There are millions and millions of players all over the world that are 15 handicaps, 20 handicaps, 25 handicaps. I mean, heck, I've even known a couple 40 handicaps that are using this golf ball. And the whole thing we're trying to find out here today is how good is this golf ball, but how good is this golf ball for the average consumer, you know, for the average guy playing? Because um, it is the most used golf ball in the world, and they, by far it, it, it's priced that way at about over $50 a dozen. So it's definitely the most expensive golf ball in the mainstream market. So uh, we'll get into more of that in a second, but just keep that in mind as we go through this review. Um, but first of all, let's go ahead and get into the design. I mean, you kind of know it. Uh, <laughs> there's the Titleist logo. It's been the same for a while. Um, you know, Titleist isn't going to change anything. They don't need to. They have an iconic look. They have an iconic brand. Why would you change anything? There's no need to. Um, on the side there, I don't like the alignment tool. I'm very picky on my alignment tools. I like like a more thicker bar or something a little, a little bigger. Um, that way I can line my ball up a little bit better. I don't like the arrows that point down. Just a personal preference. All right, and one thing I do want to point out about the Pro V1 that um, I think that maybe some people haven't noticed or maybe haven't, haven't realized yet is that with the new model this year, the 2021 model, they have changed the cover a little bit. Um, and I'm a little nervous because a lot of these companies now are starting to do what they call a proprietary blend. Um, and what I've noticed from testing golf balls, I've tested a lot of direct-to-consumer golf balls and you know third-party golf balls. And what I've noticed is, is that when it comes to this proprietary blend, um, either you got it or you don't. Uh, some companies, you know, like Quantix, have have made a proprietary blend. They've you know used scientists and engineers to really try to get this down to a, to an art, um, and actually tested pretty well. But I've also experienced some with proprietary blends that honestly were just were terrible. They really compromised the golf ball, ruined the durability. Now with Titleist, I would expect it to be good, um, but again, after looking on their website, it looks like they are using a type of proprietary blend now in the Pro V1. They've changed the cover a little bit to try to get it to stick a little more. Oh, my 
bad. So it's probably not gonna surprise any of you, but the Pro V1 pretty much passes with flying colors when it comes to chipping around the green. The ball has plenty of stopping power, it checks up very nicely, and it has a pretty good feel to it. I will say, however, it's not a very soft feel. This is one of the more firmer balls that I've tested recently. Um, now granted, I have been testing a lot of two-piece golf balls, so maybe I'm used to something a little softer, uh, but it's not got the spring action like the Vero did or like the Snell did. Um, this is a pretty hard click, and you can definitely feel it in your hands. So you're gonna hear the feedback, you're gonna feel the feedback, um, it honestly kind of feels more like an X-Ball, like if you play a Chrome Soft X or a TB5X, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, it actually comes off the club really well, it has a little bit of spring to it, um, it doesn't seem to have any problem lagging behind. Uh, the ball seems to travel a long way. All right, so the putter actually feels a little different. It's kind of nice to test something that, that I get a little bit different of a reaction than I usually do. Um, the Pro V1 feels a little bit more like a tour ball. Like it feels more like a pro ball. Um, it does spring off the club nice, but it doesn't spring like a bouncy ball. This almost reminds me of a luxury sport car with a, a V8 or a V12 engine in it. It's not gonna go from zero to 60 in, in 2.5 seconds, but it has just power. You know, it just it has push power. That's what this golf ball kind of reminds me of and feels like. Um, it doesn't have any trouble getting to the hole. Like I said, it seems to get there just fine, um, but it does require a little bit of getting used to. I'm used to a lot of these golf balls recently where I barely tap them and they just go flying. This one's not the case. There's a little bit more precision that the player has over the golf ball, um, which is good for tour players and bad for beginners. Uh, not a lot of forgiveness there, but overall, again, it feels great. Roll really well. All right, so after testing the putting and the chipping, let's just go ahead and get right into these numbers now um, and let's see what we got. All right, so starting out with the 50 yard pitch, uh, this is from a 54 degree uh, Callaway wedge, 7,107 RPM. That's a little low. Um, honestly, after 15 shots, usually with any type of ball, I usually get at least 7,500. Um, with, with a Pro V1, I know when I was doing my testing, you know, back at the beginning before I had reviewed the Pro V1, um, I was getting like 7,500, 7,600, but that was with the old generation ball. So I don't know if the new cover has something to do with that. I don't know if I wasn't just hitting it pure. Um, but honestly, most of the time I can usually get nine to 10,000 RPM out of a couple hits if I really hit them pure. But even when I was hitting this one pure, I was getting only about 8,000 to 8,500. So there wasn't a lot of max out there. A little disappointing with that. I'm not exactly sure why it's weird, but I mean, I just, you know, after 15 shots, that's all I could get. So uh, hopefully the numbers of the pitching wedge are a little better than that since they're actually full swing. Let's find out. All right, so first of all, with the pitching wedge, let's start out with the ball speed, 92.1 mile per hour. That's pretty decent, actually. Uh, most of the time with these harder, more firmer golf balls, um, I'll find myself in the you know, 90, 91 range. I usually don't get as much compression because it's a wedge. Um, I gotta do a better job of leaning that shaft forward. I don't always do the best at that, but that's a pretty decent number. So honestly, for that, I was really surprised. Uh, Distance-wise, everything was pretty in line as far as you know, only five or six yards of difference max, so the consistency was good. I like that. Um, however, the spin was only 7,500. 589 RPM. Usually with a full pitching wedge, even on a two-piece golf ball, I get 8,000. Um, does that mean that other golf balls spin more than this one does? No, but for my swing speed, it might just not be compressing right, and that's honestly what it felt like. It feels very firm um, coming off the club. There's not a lot of softness to it, so um, I don't know. You know, I've heard rumors a while back that they kind of switched as far as the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X a few years ago. I, I I'm still undecided on that. I haven't been able to find conclusive evidence, but I've heard rumors that the Pro V1 is now for the faster swingers. That could be the case. Um, but yeah, honestly, the, the spin's pretty disappointing, especially since with the Mizuno two-piece ball I reviewed the last time, I got 8,000. So uh, a little disappointing there. I mean, 7,500 is still enough to stop on a green. It's not gonna alter it in any way. Ultimately, it's 400 RPM, but it's just disappointing to see a golf ball over $50 a dozen not compress that well. Maybe it's just not meant for my swing, swing type. Um, you know, maybe the cover has something to do with it again. I don't know, but let's test with the seven iron. Usually on these firmer balls, I have a little bit better luck with the seven iron. So let's see how it compressed. Tell you one thing I like about this golf ball 
It is definitely clicky, but I kind of like it. I'll tell you what, the feedback is there. You definitely know if you mishit this ball. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> it will let you know. Here, let's, let's listen to this for a second. Hear that? <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, see, and that's a miss hit right there, so you can definitely tell the difference. Okay, so yeah, so 110.2 miles an hour with a 7-iron, uh, that's pretty good. You know, as far as compressing off of a 7-iron, again, a lot of consistency in the distances, which is nice. That's kind of like what Titleist is known for. A lot of people really trust, you know, their, their consistency as far as trust. When I hit this golf ball, where is it going to go? How far is it going to go? And the distance-wise there was awesome. It was really good to see that. Um, and then even spin-wise, uh, just under 5,800, or no, just over 5,800, I'm sorry, 5,826. That's right in the perfect zone. It's just enough with a 7-iron to get it to stop on the green, but not enough to where it's going to alter, you know, your, your shot and lose distance. So really sweet spot number there. 7-iron, everything across the board looks really good. Um, so it's good to see it kind of bounce back in that regard. But of course, we all know that the most important is going to be the driver. Um, based on the compression numbers I've already seen, I'm a little nervous, but let's find out. All right, so here's where the part of the review, this is what's really going to set a lot of people off. Um, but unfortunately, I'm just going to read these numbers to you as they are. You can just take them for a grain of salt, whatever you want. So the first thing I'm going to say is I had trouble compressing this golf ball off the driver. I had a lot of trouble compressing it. Um, you know, I averaged 139.7 miles per hour ball speed. That is extremely low for a golf ball of this magnitude. For something that's $50 plus a dozen, I would expect at least 145. With my swing, I've gotten that with two-piece balls. I've gotten that, you know, I've gotten 148 with the Srixons before. Um, so getting 139, I, I just struggled to get it over 140 period um, and after multiple shots um, I kind of got discouraged if I'm being honest with you uh, more on that in a second let me go ahead and give you the other numbers so 2658 was my rpms that's pretty good actually I was pretty low but I will say that there is no forgiveness on this golf ball off the driver um, looking at the spin numbers you know if, if we're going down it's literally like 3400 rpm 1982 rpm uh, 3,200 RPM, 2,100 RPM. Like if you hit it perfect, there's no spin. It's great. It's going to carry a long way. You're going to get a ton of distance. But if you do kind of hit down on it, maybe a little too much or hit it off the wrong part of the golf club, it's going to spin like crazy. Um, and you can tell, you can tell the differences between when I hit it well and it carried a long way and I didn't, and it did not forgive me. Um, so again, more on that in a second, uh, but carry yards only 222.4. That is a abysmally low. Um, after I got all these numbers, guys, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I didn't want to accept them just right off the bat. This was after about 15, 20 driver hits. Uh, so what I did was I actually did these test numbers initially back a couple months ago. Um, I, I kind of went online. I studied swing speed, how to get your swing speed up, how to you know get the, the club more in front and release, get more power in the front leg. And I did increase my swing speed a little bit, which was actually good for my game. So I'm kind of glad it did it. But I was actually able to get my swing speed up from 100 mile an hour to 107, 108. Now that may not seem like much, but that turned this golf ball completely around. My ball speed went up to 157, 158, just from that little turnaround. And the reason is simple. It's because I wasn't compressing the golf ball. Um, once I got my swing speed up and I was hitting it, I was having a blast. This golf ball was just jumping off the club and trying to get it to 160. I actually ended up getting it to 159.7. <laughs> that was my max, which is by far the highest I've ever done, uh, which was great. But those initial numbers weren't weren't good, which in the conclusion, I'll kind of tell you what all that means. Uh, but driver was was very wishy-washy as far as it, it's just not forgiving. It's not, it, this is a pro ball. It's meant for pro players um, and, and it's meant for higher swing speed guys. And I think it's meant for guys who strike the ball extremely well. Uh, I would say 90% or better. All right. So one of the things I want to mention here, as far as the forgiveness on the driver, this is just a kind of a good example. I just kind of wanted to show you in case you're not exactly sure. Um, so I had a club speed. Here's one hit where I had a club speed of 98.3 miles per hour, and I got a 145.3 mile an hour ball speed, which is pretty good. Actually, that number, I mean, honestly, I, that, that swing was a little low for me as far as, you know, slow um, just by a couple mile an hour but the ball speed was actually pretty good now 145 honestly that's i'd live with that every time especially if it hit the center of the fairway however the next one the very next hit was 99 mile an hour ball swing or club speed i'm sorry and so a little bit better 0.7 mile an hour faster but i lost 10 miles an hour of ball speed 
it went down to 135.9. Um, what that means is the first one got hit in the center of the club. The second one was probably hit off the toe, maybe off the heel a little bit. And I lost that much ball speed. That's the forgiveness I'm talking about. I mentioned forgiveness a lot. I think it's one of the most important parts of a golf ball. Um, and for me, being an average golfer who doesn't always hit the center of the, the club face, I want as much forgiveness as I can get. Um, but the Pro V1 is a tour level ball. And as you can see from those numbers specifically, if you don't hit the center of the club face, it's going to punish you a little bit. But it does have some upside, though, as far as the lower, you know, spin rates if you hit it right. All right, so let's let's talk about those numbers for a second because I haven't experienced anything quite like this on the channel yet. Now, granted, I haven't reviewed any type of X golf ball yet as far as, you know, the Chrome Soft X or the TP5X, those golf balls that are really firm and really hard for high swingers. Um, I've only done, you know, mostly two-piece golf balls or even, you know, more forgiving four-piece golf balls or three-piece golf balls. Uh, so this is kind of new territory for me. And all of these numbers with a normal swing speed are abysmally low. Does that mean the Pro V1 is a terrible golf ball? Well, no, it doesn't. Um, I think it's pretty obvious from increasing my driver swing that it's actually a pretty darn good golf ball. But the problem is it's meant for pro players. It's meant for guys who have a five handicap or lower, who swing the club very fast, who are hitting it 270, 280, minimal. Um, if you're not... I mean, here's the thing. A lot of you are not going to want to hear this. You're not going to like it. But if you're not swinging that that consistently, if you're not striking the ball that consistently, if you're not hitting the ball 260, 270, you don't need to be using this golf ball. And I know that's something that's going to drive a lot of you nuts. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's the number one ball in golf and everyone uses it and tour players use it. Well, tour players do use it, but they're tour players. You're not. And that's that's going to be hard to hear. It's hard to swallow pills. Um, but the the I mean, it, it's pretty basic. I, I, I have a 100 mile an hour swing speed with every golf ball I test. And I lost 15 yards with the Pro V1. Not because it's a bad golf ball, but because it's just not meant for me and my swing speed. Which means that if you're a senior player, if you're you know a, a beginner guy who's still spraying the ball all over the, the course, even if you're somebody who maybe you're, you're decent and you're a 15 handicap or maybe even a 12 handicap, there are more forgiving golf balls that can be better for your game. Will you lose them maybe a yard or two? Maybe, you know, will, will you lose a little bit of spin? Probably not. I mean, based on these numbers, I get more spin with two-piece golf balls than I do with this one. So ultimately, the Pro V1 is a great golf ball, and if you have amazing swing speed, I think it's going to work out for you just well. But if you're not, stop kidding yourself. You're losing out. And I'm sure ultimately I'll get ripped by that by a few of you, but the numbers don't lie. Um, like I said, once I was able to get my swing speed up, it was awesome. I mean, it was one of the funnest golf balls to test. It was just jumping off the club. The spin drastically changed. I mean, everything, once it was compressing, totally different golf ball. Last but not least, I do want to talk about the durability a little bit. I wanted to go into that other thing real quick, but um, I want to talk about the durability a little bit. It honestly performed really well. I don't have any pictures to show you this time because on my last hit, when I was finally getting it up to almost 160 ball speed, I hit it and honestly, I've never hit 160 ball speed, so it was going pretty fast. I went through the net, never to be seen again. So unfortunately, I lost it. I, I feel bad about it, but um, I'll just be honest with you. I, I know it sucks. I'm not showing you the pictures, but it tested really well. It was about a four, four and a half out of five, but I will say it was not as good as the old ones. It did not perform as well as far as the durability. Um, and even taking it on the course, I've noticed that too. And I mean, it's not a lot. It's maybe, maybe a five or 10% decrease, but I think it might have something to do with that cover because the cover just doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. And honestly, I, I'm not a fan of it. I think they should go back. Um, I know they're trying to do something new and creative because they haven't really changed the ball that much in a long time, but I think that they should go back to the old cover and maybe just try something a little different. So the ultimate conclusion for this golf ball is um, it's a great golf ball if you are a great golfer. Um, but if you're still in just that average, you're a weekend warrior, you know, you got you go out once a week, you don't practice a lot, you like to drink beer on the course, whatever, um, it's not for you. It's not. This, this ball is highly engineered for guys who are just almost near perfect um, at the game of golf, which is extremely hard to do. There's a few out there, but um, that's pretty much what it is for guys that, you know, 
ball strike exceptionally well, hit the ball very far, know how to work it from right to left, um, you know, maybe even use blades and are able to, to get a little bit more workability out of their clubs, things like that. If, if none of those things are you, I'm sorry, you just have no use to you. This ball's just no use to you. And it's not because it's bad. It's just because you're just not going to get the same results out of it. Get yourself a more forgiving golf ball that's going to forgive if you hit it off the toe a little bit. It's going to help your game. Um, so that's definitely what I recommend. As always, guys, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Please don't eat me alive in the comments. I'm just trying to help everyone. <laughs> uh, but as always, keep watching and keep saving and keep learning.